people say not just me I'll be living like I don't care As a refugee, you have the right to have access to and to have a fair hearing before the court You have the right to public relief and assistance No contracting state shall expel or return a refugee in any manner whatsoever to the frontiers of territories where his life or freedom will be threatened on account of his race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group, or political opinion. When I started working for UNHCR over uh, 20 years ago, the number of refugees in the, in the world was actually decreasing. And I was thinking, maybe someday uh, there won't be any more refugees in the world. Maybe I, I can go home and find another job. Um, look at what is happening in Myanmar. Massive human rights violations. I was there um, from 2015 to 2017 when the influx of Rohingya refugees started uh, in Bangladesh. I was the head of sub-office in Cox's Bazaar. Um, I was talking to them as they crossed the Naf River and they were telling me what was, what was happening to them. Women being raped men being slaughtered with long knives, children being thrown into burning houses. And now Cox's Bazaar has the largest refugee camps uh, in the world today. Look what's, what's happening today. The Taliban are, are claiming more than 50% of the territory of Afghanistan. In South Sudan, I was also there for, in uh, 2005 to, to 2007. It was before independence and they became independent like five years later. And my dream of there no longer being refugees or IDPs in the world was, was that, it was just a dream. I think like they said in the video, there will always be refugees and there will always be IDPs and there will always be a need for, for UNHCR. I was in a refugee camp in Adamawa State in 2016, where a woman, and it was one of the camps that was run by the Catholic Church, I think it was called St. Joseph's, a woman ran in to the camp. I think she was an internally displaced person. She literally ran in, in front of us, I was there on a relief mission, lay down on the ground, and she had a two-year-old clinging to her breasts, literally. So we all rushed towards her, thinking it would be a matter of a glass of water. She died in front of us. The child, little boy, of course too young to know his name, tell us his name. Now he would have become just another statistic. So we do need to actually look at the frontline responding force as well. Yeah, but what were the circumstances that led to your leaving your country? Uh, that was in 2016 when uh, we lawyers and teachers took to the street to protest and ask the government to return to the 19th 61 uh, status quo, where we had experienced uh, a federal system of governor. So that is what we bargained for. Uh, we actually formed uh, an organization known as the Consortium, uh, where the government sooner or later uh, arrested uh, the leaders and started looking for uh, supporters. So I was actually told that they were coming for me and I had to escape. We slept somewhere in the bush before that it took us about two or three days to get to a come. And finally I am here. How how did the nineteen fifty one convention help you to settle here? I have been together with the fact that I'm called to the Nigerian bar. I've been able to survive and make a living. I move freely, I have access to justice, access to health, and uh, there is nowhere I cannot go. So I take advantage of my education. Right now, I'm handling a case in the ECOWAS court. In fact, we have got judgment uh, whereby a Venezuelan was passing through Kivad to Iran and was arrested at the instance of the United States of America. America wants him extradited. And we have gone to the ECOWAS court, and the ECOWAS court said, no, you have not followed your process. You cannot extradite him from Kivad. But America is insisting 
that he be taken out of that country. So the, the struggle is still on. And by the way, we lost about 97 Africans uh, 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 in southern Libya three days ago. These 55 people were going, nine of them Nigerians. They were all arrested and extrajudicially executed by uh, former president of that country, Ayagame. And what we have done again, we have gone to the Echo was Court. Luckily, that country is currently carrying out an investigation of what happened in the past. And we've not been able to locate the family members of the entire nine of them. But we have already got two, you know, and we have made a case before uh, uh, the government of the Gambia. And what all this means is that we have a challenge in the region and in Nigeria to ensure that the rights of refugees are protected. I'm a banker. I'm come to Nigeria for all events. But I don't get a job. Why? Because I'm a refugee. I want to have a driver license. It's difficult here in Lagos Island. I want to have a travel document. We told me you have to take one Nigerian who have to sign like your back, your protector. But since I was still on the seeking of asylum, there's a document that will give you to, it's like a recognition document that you have come to seek for an asylum and it has the registration number on it. So when I ask them, is this possible for me to have an account? They say yes, that I should go in with that document to any bank of my choice, and they will be able to assist me in opening an account. But I actually went to almost all the banks with that particular document, and they rejected. That is not valid. It's not recognized. What do we do to prevent the refugee phenomenon? And if they must occur, how do we promote and protect the human right of everybody in Nigeria, including the refugees, the IDPs, the returnees, and population of concern. Thank you. Uh, this convention tra travel document that we give, you are given a form to complete, and one of the requirements of that form is that you provide uh, a guarantor who is a Nigerian. And I, have, I want to tell you, it has been a very successful exercise. Uh, uh, I, this convention document has been issued to as many that are qualified to have it. I said something the other time. I said it's one thing to have all these beautifully crafted provisions in all these um, international instruments and local legislation. It's another thing to actually you know, have the political will to implement those rights. Guarantor means somebody who knows you, who can vouch for you, your integrity, your background. If I don't know you, uh, it's going to be difficult for me to guarantee you. And so we must look at that area. Once you have already been accredited either as an asylum seeker or a refugee, the status should be enough, you know, a guarantee for the bank to open an account for you. Once you have entered Nigeria, either seeking asylum or you are a refugee, you are also entitled to, to all the rights and privileges of Nigeria. You are entitled to chapter 4. You cannot be expelled from Nigeria without going through <coughs> due process. Article 12 of the African Charter has said anybody who enters any African country cannot be deported without going through due process. During the war in Liberia, and this is the lesson for us as Nigerians, uh, people, many people left the country and they were refugees. In Kenya, some people were on the queue to get food, ration. And a lawyer saw a big man in the judiciary of his country and said, my Lord, what are you doing here? The chief justice of that country. And the lawyer said, my Lord, what are you doing here? He said, lawyer, what are you doing here? We have been chased out of our country. 
And that is why I'm on the queue here, like an ordinary person. But don't let people know that I'm in the chief justice. I'm the former chief justice of that country. Thank Nobody you very much. supernatural. Life versus spirit of the carnival. The personality, no matter at all. Individuality cannot make us tall. I sing, I sing for all of y'all. Don't let anybody push you to the wall. Na community, na him make us all. Secret society, na him break us.